I like things that look original, and occasionally I'll get an idea that I think is pretty good. And even though this was a mountain of work, and I think twice about doing it again, I did come up with a better way to do it, and I talk about that later in the video. So this is a backsplash from a kitchen, at least on one wall. My original idea was to do it on both walls, but then I did the first wall, and I said, enough of that. And what makes this interesting is the wood that I'm using. This is spalted maple, and it also has a bunch of wormholes in it that add to the character. The boards that I'm using are not flat, and they're certainly not straight. So to get the most out of each one, I'm going to cut it in half first. And I'm putting this sanding block here against my fence on one side only, and that'll keep it from pinching or rocking, and I'll be able to make the cut. This wood has been kicking around for about three years, so I don't want to take a chance on there being any grit on here that could dull the knives on my planer, so I'm quickly brushing it off. And then I can run each piece through the planer and get them down to the thickness that I need, which is around three quarters of an inch. With all that planing done, I can pull out my jointer and straighten one edge and square it up. That's the edge that will go up against the fence of my mini table saw sled. Now, as you saw in the opening, the interesting thing about this is that the blocks are different thicknesses. And I settled on three. And what I'm doing here is I'm marking that right on my table saw so I can use that as a guide as I push the wood through. And what I'm aiming for is to get equal numbers of each thickness block. And then I can randomly put them on the wall. And once again, to get the most out of this, I'm using a very thin curved blade so that I'm not turning half of the material into sawdust while I'm cutting out these blocks. And then when I got what I thought was enough blocks cut, I started trimming off the other end. The first end is already square from when I ran it through the jointer, but I do need to trim off the other end. And once again, I'm using my mini table saw sled to do that. So there were hundreds of blocks to cut, and this took a long time. So this is probably the primary reason why I wouldn't want to do this again. It's a mountain of work just to cut out all the blocks that you need, and then you still have to put them on. And then if you thought that all the fun was over just because they're all cut out, no, I still have to do some sanding. And that's the side that was sitting down on the table saw, and the blade splintered it while it was being cut. So I need to clean that up. And then I can bring them into my kitchen and actually start gluing them to the wall. However, there's one thing I need to do first, and that's lay down a strip that's a little bit thicker than the actual width of the blocks. And what that does is it creates a nice straight line to start laying the blocks. And I'll start from there and move up the wall. And when that's dry, I'll take the strip out again and fill in the bottom. Now there's nothing special about this wall, it's just painted drywall and I'm gluing these things on with polyurethane construction adhesive. I'm spreading out a thin bead along the back of each tile and sticking it right to the wall. And because the adhesive doesn't have any water in it, it doesn't make these things curl, which is very important. If you were to use regular wood glue on this, the first thing that each one of these tiles would do, especially the long thin ones, is curl up and they won't sit flat on the wall. So then it was just a matter of gluing each tile in place. And if you thought that cutting the tiles out took time, this takes even longer, especially when you need to fit it around obstacles like window trim and that outlet plate that I took off earlier. Here you can see the outlet plate is back in place and I'm fitting the blocks around it. What I did after to make this blend in a bit better as I cut out a thin strip of maple to cover that outlet plate and glued that directly onto the plastic. So like I said before, after I had everything above that strip done, 
and let it dry overnight, I took that out the next day and I started filling in the bottom. And because that strip is actually wider than the blocks that I made, that leaves a little bit of a gap at the bottom, which is good because you really want some place for the caulking to squeeze in. And what I did to lift up each block was I cut a bunch of these very small shims and slipped those in. So we've established that cutting out the blocks took a lot of time. Also sanding the blocks took a lot of time. And gluing the blocks in place and cutting them to fit took even more time. What about finishing them? Well, you can't leave these on the wall as they are. They have to be finished in some way. And I'm gonna be using water-based polyurethane the first step is to slip in a piece of paper along the bottom so that I'm not getting any of that finish down on the countertop. And it's very important to get that paper pulled out as quickly as you can after you've finished the blocks so that it doesn't get glued in place. I know that for the very obvious reason that I actually did that. I left the paper in and then I had to cut it out with a razor blade. Like I said, I'm using water-based polyurethane and I'm putting that on with a brush. However, while I was doing this, it occurred to me that if there was a project that was ever made for spraying, it would be this. It would save so much time if you could spray this instead of brushing it. However, I didn't want to spray inside my kitchen, so I thought of an even better way to do all this. And as usual, it's too late. And that's to cut out a piece of thin plywood to fit in the areas where I'm putting this and then glue the blocks directly to that plywood as a panel. And then I could do all that out of my workshop without actually coming into the kitchen and then bring it out back and spray on three coats of water-based polyurethane. And then I could bring it into my kitchen and just slip it in place with a few dabs of glue and it's finished. So there you go. If you're planning on doing this, that is the best way to do it. After that first coat dried, I had to sand every block individually and then I could brush on the second coat and that actually went a lot faster because the wood is sealed and not soaking up the finish as much. With an uneven surface like this and when you're using a brush you're going to get a lot of drips so you want to keep on top of the bigger ones, wipe those away as you see them happening and by the time you put on the third coat you've probably gotten pretty good at this so that makes it go a lot faster as well. And then, of course, the final step is to caulk between the backsplash and the countertop. And I'm using clear silicone to do that. And like you saw at the beginning of the video, here's what the final result looks like. If there's one thing that can be said about this, it's a look that, you know, you're not going to find in your neighbor's house. I really like it. It really goes with the rest of the kitchen. And I think that if I had my time back, I would actually do it again.